Comments, show, ideas, and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the show part- Brought to you today by the Ant Farm and Green Planet. If you are a legal patient in Michigan and don't know where you can get quality seeds or clones legally, Urban Genetics is your answer. If you've experienced the two to six week wait for your seeds only to find out that they don't all germinate, it's time to call Urban Genetics. Urban Genetics is Detroit's home for genetics with legal seeds for legal patients and special order services available. They even have hard to find seeds and clones. Call Urban Genetics, 248-266-0980. Urban Genetics, 248-266-0980. Hey, Steve Green here to tell you about my good friends over at the Hydro Hut Garden Supply Store in Inkster. Why am I so excited about Hydro Hut? The $200 Mad Light deal. That's right. $200 gets you a 1,000-watt high-pressure sodium bulb, an E-Wing reflector, and a digital ballast. That's right, a digital one. Call them today at 313-228-5544. It's Hydro Hut. It's 20% off on your first purchase, but you got to mention the medical marijuana radio show to get it. Check them out at hydrohutonline.com. That's hydrohut at hydrohutonline.com. What? 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 Countdown to launch. Good. 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 Launch commit. Guidance is internal. Ignition sequence start. Five, four, three, two, one. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Tune in to that medical marijuana show. 855 Triple M Radio. Keep it legal, keep it legal, keep it legal, keep it legal. Hey. You tune in to that medical marijuana show. 855 Triple M Radio. Keep it legal, keep it legal, keep it legal. Okay, Steve is the host with the co-host Denise. Starting at noon Saturdays every week. Yes, we keep it. You legal. Legislators and lawyers, doctors and the growers. The show is for the people. Michigan Medical Marijuana, no hassle. We talk about anything, any issue we can handle. Call us up and let us know what is on your mind. And make sure when you do it, do it legal every time. Hey! You tune in to that Medical Marijuana show. 855 Triple M Radio. Keep it legal, keep it legal, keep it legal, keep it legal. Hey! You tuned in to that medical marijuana show. 855 Triple M Radio. Keep it legal, keep it legal, keep it legal, keep it legal. Welcome to the Medical Marijuana Radio Show. We are live at the Hash Bash in Ann Arbor from the Monroe Street Fair. And it's a little bit crazy out there, folks. I'm telling you, it's a little bit crazy. It sounds like we're, uh, it sounds like we've got good audio. Um, I'm just wondering if there's any way we could double check. Robert, can double check on the audio here? Look us up on the Ustream and see if we've got a good audio. Because I, I, first, I can hear us on the, on, in our headphones, but I can't tell if we're on the radio or not. You're, so, you have my headphones on. Right? So we're, <laughs> everybody, nobody can hear here. Everybody's, everybody's juggling headphones. Uh, we're live on 1310 AM hey. WDTW, Detroit's Progressive Talk. Uh, it is the Medical Marijuana Radio Show. It is the Hash Bash. It's uh, going to be a great time out here today. Uh, we were hoping we could get Steve D'Angelo over here to talk to us. It looks like that might not happen. Tell us what's going on, Rick. Well, Steve D'Angelo is supposed to be speaking at Hash Bash today. And He's uh, also headlining, by yep. the way. I just saw the speaker list. This is Denise. And, and uh, he is the first speaker, so, you know. He's, he, he may he may make his way over after that, hopefully. Yep, so at least he won't be here to start, but we might be able to get him to finish up. And Hash Bash runs a little bit longer this year, an hour and a half instead of an hour, so there'll be plenty of extra speaking time. So hopefully he'll be able to make it here before the 1 o'clock deadline on our program. Yeah, it's, um, uh, so we got, we do have a pe- few people out here. Theo's out here today. Uh, we've got Ant from the Ant Farm uh, uh, helping to sponsor the booth. We're right outside of Green Planet, who is also helping to sponsor our booth today. Uh, Robert is here. He's our web developer. Um, and we've got a bunch of people scheduled to come by and talk to us. Uh, the hash bash happens actually on the Diag, um, which is what's where the protest, it's, it's considered a protest, isn't it, Denise? It is a protest rally, and it just got underway at high noon, as, of course, it does every year. I believe this is the 41st hash bash, and it is crowded. I just got back from over there. I was on stage shaking hands with everybody who's everybody. You know, Charmy's over there, and... Jamie Lowell and um, Chuck Ream and everybody. The speaker list is quite extensive. There are about 25, 27 people on it. So mm. to get all of those people in in an hour and a half is going to be a neat trick. 
Well, it's a great weather, though, so that explains the oh, wonderful beautiful. turnout, plus the D'Angelo factor, and, of course, uh, this being the 41st anniversary. A lot of people are coming mm -hmm. out to support Adam Brook, too. Adam, who's uh, typically the uh, the arranger of the Hash Bash, is unfortunately incarcerated for this event, so there's a lot of uh, uh, free Adam Brook t-shirts available out here people can purchase to support him, and also uh, I think they're passing the bucket around as well. They are. There are a lot of free Adam Brook signs, and it's funny because uh, uh, I had never seen Steve D'Angelo in person, of course, but he's not hard to spot because he's surrounded by people and cameras trying to get photos with him. It's it's kind of cool. Yeah. I haven't seen him at all here today. Yeah, yet. he's <laughs> up on stage right now. So. Really? He's up there schmoozing it up Oh, already? yeah. He doesn't need very much schmoozing. He's being swarmed. Well, but, uh, Mon <laughs> Monroe Street Fair is just two blocks south of the Diag, so if you're headed to the Diag, swing by Monroe Street Fair on your way, or once you finish your activities at the Diag, definitely come down to the fair. I'm really bummed that uh, Rory couldn't bring him over here, just because, you well, know? But, but like he's a headliner, he's though. Oh, he's I know, I know. That. If he's so on stage right now, yeah. then he can't come to the radio program yet, but he mm -hmm. might still be able to make it later. I thought he was well, talking. I was talking. I have a couple of audio courses. Yeah, they I'll originally him up and drag him over. Yeah, nice, they originally had nice. him last. They originally had him from like one to one thirty. That's but right what now I thought. Right, they that did. was the plan. Yeah. But um, they have him headlining right now. I wonder why. This, well, usually the headliner does goes last. I I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, it's possible that they thought they might run out of time and they didn't want to rush him. I, oh, it I could see. be his Who schedule. Knows? Who knows? Who knows? We'll have to ask Chuck or Nick or whoever did the speaker list. Here's the other thing that was going on. Um, I was talking to Chris. Now, I met Chris, who's a videographer out at the THC Expo. He was hanging out with Marvin mm. Marvin and crew. Marvin Marvin is also on stage, <laughs> by oh, the way. Oh, oh yeah. That's Marvin's a, oh. on stage. Although he's Michael not on Kamorn. the speaker's list. He's yeah. of, course, of course he's on stage. There's, there's a mix for <laughs> you. I'm quite angry. <laughs> there's a mix for you. Marvin Marvin and Steve D'Angelo on yeah. stage together. <laughs> yeah. wow. Together again. Uh, Captain <laughs> Kirk is over there. <laughs> Michael Kamorn's over there. Uh, I saw Brandy. Uh, I didn't see Matt Abel, but he's speaking, I think, third or fourth, so yep. he better get over there. Matt was ill last evening, too. We did the Michigan Normal Quarterly meeting at the Clarion Hotel last evening, and, uh, and Matt was a little, little under the weather, so uh, he'll definitely show up for his speaking appearance, but uh, no guarantee that he'll be able to do a lot afterwards. And uh, Charmy, I couldn't make it to the Normal meeting last night. I had my kids, those pesky offspring, wanting mm -hmm. their mom again, but... Uh, um, and Easter weekend. Who did that, by the way? <laughs> oh well, it depends, uh, depends on where your Easter grass was, I suppose. Good Lord. But um, I heard from Charmy that the, that no, the power was out. Don't chuckle my Easter grass joke. Wait a minute. It was oh, funny. Well, I'm chuckling inside. Oh, it was very nice. <laughs> but I, I, Charmy, Charmy told me, oh, I want that shirt. Charmy told me that um, the light, the power went out at the Clarion. Yep, <laughs> yes, actually on Thursday, there are transformer blue, so uh, all Thursday night. Oh, it was a no, not great. That's most what it of was. the day on Friday, there was no power at the Clarion Hotel. <laughs> they did get it restored in time for the uh, for the meeting. During the meeting, actually, Dan Solano was on stage and the lights came Good. back on. It was fantastic. And uh, no problems there. Everybody, make sure you stop by the Clarion Hotel. There's an expo going on there as well. There are vendors uh, throughout the entire place. Uh, it's a fantastic location. So after Monroe Street Fair, you got to hit the Clarion for the MMI Normal fundraiser this evening. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm uh, just looking at this. I see we've got about, a few, about four or five minutes left to break. I just tr try to talk about uh, sponsors. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people out here today. Do we have a list of the people who are on the Monroe Street Fair? You know, there's wow. a, a. I don't know of a list. I can see right now we've got the CAP guys, the Botanicare, uh, also the American Cultivator. I know that uh, SGS is out there too. Uh, there are people telling, selling t shirts. Um, of course, you can always sign the petition to repeal prohibition. Um, uh, the Committee for a Safer Michigan has a booth out here for signatures as well. For repealtoday.org. Can you can also, can people come out here and sign to uh, repeal, uh, recall Bill Schuette? I believe that uh, Mr. Richard Clement has some uh, petitions out here to repeal uh, Bill Schuette to recall that guy. Uh, speaking of Richard, he was doing some serious cheerleading on the Diag before before uh, <laughs> before Hash Bash officially started. It was fantastic. I'm, it was I'm very much a rally at that point. I'm telling you, I love Richard Clement Sr. because he's always, uh, he's like he's like Marvin Marvin in a way. He, he'll, he'll party in the corner by himself if that's what's left. <laughs> well, and, and he doesn't need anybody to give him a, a, a crank to get him started. He's always ready to go. Uh, and it's always a positive message, too. You never have to worry about what's being said when Richard grabs a microphone because you know he's, he's on message always. And I'll it's always you, free the weed. That's right. Free the weed. He's the first guy yelling free the weed. Uh, I want to see Richard with a Mr. Microphone back in the 70s. Oh, that would, wow. Hey, baby, be back to pick you up later. Can I say something? <laughs> I have... I am absolutely delighted about the the number and and um, variety of fantastic T-shirts today. I'm going to be broke by the end of the day. I can tell you right now. Well, you're better off than I am. I'm broke already. <laughs> I'm broke, broke already. already. You're just going to have to steal shirts. I'm going to probably <laughs> buy a couple. Of Speaking of shirts, fantastic. look, Haas was going to bring shirts out to us. Mm -hmm. um, he was going to bring them out at the THC Expo. Um, we missed it. Well, well, 
he didn't have them at the THC Expo. But hash bash shirts? He's got the hash bash <gasps> shirts, a whole variety of them, but they're out at the Clarion. Right. Yeah. Uh. He's guarding a room at the Clarion. And he's got a very <laughs> large display out there. His uh, his booth at the Clarion is one of the largest. There's tons of T-shirts out there. Just another reason to hit that spot. Did, did you watch the Harry Potter movie when 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 they had the the whatever it was hidden below the the three-headed dog? Oh yeah, that's, the Cerberus dog. That's right. Hoss at the Clarion this weekend. Oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh man, wow. That was the first one. Wow, that it takes was, me back. It was a while it? ago. That was the <laughs> that's the Chamber of Secrets. That, was oh, it the Chamber dun, of Secrets? Dun, dun, dun. Uh, yeah, that was. That's uh, crazy. I um, I just uh, for people who don't know where the Clarion is and they're out here today, you want to give them the address. The Clarion is on Jackson Road. If you just take I ninety four, get off on Jackson Road, head west. Uh, it is right there down about a quarter mile on your right hand side. Uh, super easy to find, easy access to the expressway, and lots of parking too. And of course, the entire hotel is uh, a medical marijuana and marijuana reform, uh, cannabis law reform people. So you don't have any children running around, you don't have any uh, 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 elderly people that we can offend. The entire hotel is cannabis 420 friendly this evening, so it's it's fantastic. You got to hang out. Except that elderly people are the are the fastest growing population, as I understand it. Yeah. So elderly people are also the fastest growing cranky population <laughs> as well. So. Exactly. So I have a deal with my sister that if I ever turn into a cranky old person, she'll shoot me before I can, you know. How do I get a hold of her? I'm not cranky yet, <laughs> and I'm not old. Thanks a lot. No, Neither of those two that's things. True. I vow never to be a cranky Woo. old person. Well, I'm old and cranky already. Are you really? Oh. Yeah. yeah. We hadn't yeah. noticed. <laughs> <laughs> Just not on air, which is good. The Ant Farm. Yay, Ant Farm. Woo! So Ant Farm is out here. Now let's talk about the Ant Farm a little bit. Well, come, come on over. Somebody want to represent with the Ant Farm. We only had a couple minutes to break. Get on camera. Come on, Ant Farm. we got like two minutes. So... So yeah. Talk to him. Oh, I lost my headphones. Here. Yeah, me too. Young oh, there we go. Yeah, be careful, Rick. You can't lean far too far forward, or <laughs> you will lose the headphones. Tell us about Ant Farm and where your locations here, are. Here, Rick, right there. Oh, <laughs> you might want to flip that the other way. <laughs> will that work the other way? <laughs> we're MacGyvered together here today. It's hard being on we're location. We're all on the same umbilical. Yep. <laughs> so uh, go ahead. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> we're the Ant Farm. We're located in Detroit right now. Uh, uh, medical marijuana dispensary located in Detroit in the metro De Detroit politan area. Now, uh, aren't you uh, aren't you a delivery service mainly, yes, or do you have brick and mortar? Okay. Delivery service only. Yes, right now. Okay. But uh, coming soon, we will be open a venue uh, with an emphasis on our uh, our Bud Bar. Are you really? Yes, You're going to go brick and mortar. Uh, That's uh, fantastic. Uh, yeah. That's fantastic. Do you have a location? Should we disclose or no? Uh, not not right now. You're just looking. Not right now. All right. But, uh, You'll know very, very soon. I, I know that a lot of people are looking for digs in Detroit right now. Detroit yeah. seems to be fairly, I mean, they don't have an ordinance against it, but they yeah. don't have an ordinance for it. They, if you call, they'll say, no, no, we won't we won't allow it. But frankly, I think we all know Detroit's a little too busy to bother with, you yeah. know, exactly, exactly. things that are, you know. And right now we're doing a very much emphasis. Fantastic, fantastic. Hey, we're All right, for those work. of you, antfarm.org. We're Ant going to talk to you in just a couple of minute, more minutes. We've got to hit a break right now. Okay. Uh, we'll be back with more on the Medical Marijuana Radio Show live from the Monroe Street Fair at the Hash Bash in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Don't go away. The law offices of Targowski and Grow remind you to stand up for your rights. Always treat law enforcement with respect, but if you're detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to talk to my attorneys, John Targowski and Daniel Grow. Targowski and Grow have the education and experience you need to be successful in Michigan courts. Call Targowski and Grow toll-free, 800-957-1069. The law offices of Targowski and Grow, 800-957-1069. If you are a carded Michigan medical marijuana patient with a need for safe access but have reservations about privacy and discretion, there is an answer. It's the Ant Farm. The Ant Farm is Metro Detroit's trusted professional mobile transfer service. Write this toll-free number down, 888-369-3320. Lab tested, mold and pesticide free. It's the Ant Farm's convenience you'll try, but quality standards, privacy, and friendly professionals that will bring you back. The Ant Farm comes to you. Call for discreet details right away. 888-369-3320.
you or someone you know received a traffic ticket, has been charged with a misdemeanor, drinking and driving, criminal offense, or has had their driver's license taken away, they need an attorney. They need attorney Glenn McCandless. He's helped hundreds of people solve their legal problems over the past 16 years. My law firm is dedicated to providing quality legal services at affordable rates. Call us at 586-755-2900. Again, that's 586-755-2900. Call now. If you are a legal patient in Michigan and don't know where you can get quality seeds or clones legally, Urban Genetics is your answer. If you've experienced the two to six week wait for your seeds only to find out that they don't all germinate, it's time to call Urban Genetics. Urban Genetics is Detroit's home for genetics with legal seeds for legal patients and special order services available. They even have hard to find seeds and clones. Call Urban Genetics, 248-266-0980. Urban Genetics, 248-266-0980. Hey, Steve Green here to tell you about my good friends over at the Hydro Hut Garden Supply Store in Inkster. Why am I so excited about Hydro Hut? The $200 Mad Light deal. That's right. $200 gets you a 1,000-watt high-pressure sodium bulb, an E-wing reflector, and a digital ballast. That's right, a digital one. Call them today at 313-228-5544. It's Hydro Hut. It's 20% off on your first purchase, but you got to mention the Medical Marijuana Radio Show to get it. Check them out at HydroHutOnline.com. That's HydroHut at HydroHutOnline.com. It's the Medical Marijuana Radio Show. You can't feel the heat until you hold your hand over the flame. You have to cross the line. So welcome back to the Medical Marijuana Radio Show. We are live at the Hash Bash in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, uh, I, we couldn't have picked a better day, a more sunny day. It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, it could have been raining like it does on other, uh, other previous oh, years. Oh, last year was pretty us. miserable. I froze my butt off. It was snowing, it was raining, it was snowing, it was raining. But, uh, you know, it, we still had a good turnout last year, too. Uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. A, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yeah. We've got the cameras fixed now. It takes a minute to get these things working out. <laughs> we're going to need a two-hour show. We'll do the first hour. We'll be, you know, well, working well, out the kinks. We're only an hour live on, on 1310, and then the Homegrown Report comes on from the studios uh, of uh, 1310. And um, here we'll be streaming. We'll be additionally streaming for until 5 o'clock this afternoon. Fantastic. So I'd like to find a way to uh, plug into the stage later on mm -hmm. and see if we can't get a camera over by the stage and, you know, watch some of the stage activities. Fantastic. Well, I would I would expect there's going to be no shortage of people who are going to want to sit I sit and chat for a minute with you anyway. I can tell you there's a reason we're not on the diag, and that's because, um, you know, some of the language out there is not appropriate for the radio. <laughs> well, not, not only that, you know, it's historically, it is it is a rally. It is a, you know, it is a protest. It's really hard to hear the speakers, frankly. I mean, they're all fantastic. They all have something excellent to say, especially me. <laughs> but, you know, um, but, but it, it is difficult to hear, and you're right, it's, and it's certainly difficult to capture live. Uh, even as organized as it is this year, um, it's, it's going to be, you know, really difficult to hear with all the people. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of crowd participation, so this is probably a better venue right now. Uh, so uh, when are you speaking? Do you know? Yeah, it's Rick and I are both um, scheduled to speak around 1.15, so we'll take off at the end of the show. And oh, make so we're okay. You guys are good for the, for the show, then. Yeah, looks like it. So uh, we were talking to Ant Farm. You guys, ha you guys are getting ready to open up. Uh, wh who are you from the Ant Farm, by the way? I'm yes, sorry. I'm Tori. I'm the operation manager with the Ant Farm. All right. So, Tori, um, when, uh, when I was talking to you guys earlier in the month, actually last month, I was talking to uh, Brandon, and Brandon was saying that you guys are opening up uh, on 420 uh, on a, new, a new place. Can you talk to us about that at all? Yes, yes, yes. I'll give you a little info about it. Uh, come here. I'll give you a little info about it. We're going to be opening up a sort of similar like a little bud bar kind of. So it's kind of like a little spot we can come and hang and, you know. So it's a private club? Yes, a private club. And yes. so uh, you can come there and, and you'll have uh, materials there that people can consume. Yes? Yes, yes sir. Sorry. That's an awesome thing. It, it yes, is. Sir. I You know, if I can if I can add to that, I have clients right now who are planning on opening up similar clubs in Genesee County. That's so going to be good. It's going to be fantastic. I'm all for it. So uh, d uh, do, we, do you have a location? Uh, lo located will be in the, uh, in the Highland Park area. The Highland Park area. Yes, and people yes. can call the Ant Farm number and talk to them about how they can become a private club member. Yes, always. And what now we're doing today, also we got an emphasis on our caregiver services. So we're uh, really strongly encouraging everybody to come now and get information about us, sign up with us so we know. So we we're right. Help everybody properly medicate. Yeah, that's <laughs> the proper, proper way is the best way, right? Yes, yes sir. Um, now, uh, people can find you on the Internet. It's uh, Ant Yes, you can 
find us at uh, www.ampfarmcc.org. And you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. All right. And yes. then uh, you guys got a phone number? Of course yes. you do. Our phone number is... <laughs> See, I can, you I know he never calls it. I, I don't know my phone number either. 888-369-3230. 888-369-3230. That's 888-369-3230. Let's do it one more time so we don't screw yes. it up. 888-369-3320. For the yes, Ant yes, Farm. Yes. Thanks for coming out and having the sponsors. You guys have got some T-shirts and stuff out here for yes, people today? Yes, we got T-shirts. We, uh, we also got our uh, literature out here. We were just featuring the High Times also. So oh, That's right. Tell us about yeah. the High Times thing real quick. Yes, we were just featuring the High Times in uh, May 2012, World's Strongest Strands on Earth. We made it with the Jedi OG. A and who's your girl over here helping us run camera today? Oh, Laravian. She's from the Ant Times. What's Renaissance woman. Uh, what is it? I said she's a Renaissance woman. What, what's her name again? I missed her name. Laravian. Laravian. Well, Laramia. Yeah. Hey, Laramia. <laughs> she's, she's just <laughs> waving from behind the camera. Yeah. Thanks for coming out and helping us out a little bit. And hey, don't forget, we'll be raffling off T-shirts today, too. So Raffling okay. off T-shirts yes, today? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. So How do you get into the raffle? You gotta oh, come the by raffle. The uh, raffle tickets are a dollar apiece, mm -hmm. and uh, eight for five dollars and fifteen for ten. And, and you, you guys, you can, you can come come by the booth here. Yes, and get come by the booth. By the definitely. Booth. Strongly Excellent. encourage you to come by the booth over here where we're doing the radio. We're so. at seven hundred Tappan at Tappan and Monroe. It's the corner of Tappan and Monroe streets, downtown Ann Arbor, right next to the university. Uh, you'll find us at Green Planet. Green Planet is a dispensary here. Um, and uh, they've been kind enough to host us a spot here. We got a sweet spot, Steve. We did. Nice job. Thanks so much for coming on out. Well, you got to go, you, go, go man the people over there? Yes, yes, I will. Man, make sure you come out. And we appreciate you too, Steve. Thanks so much, man. Thank you. So, um, Rick, you want to take your spot back? He's, he's, sure, he's, sure. he's like a leprechaun <laughs> over my shoulder here. <laughs> oh, no. It's, I've got bullwinkle ears. <laughs> I got the peace sign going up, the rabbit ears. No, this is a beautiful location. I'm totally excited. I don't have to fight the crowds today. <laughs> well, yeah. well, it's always a, it's always a crowd fight anytime you get into an urban area. But boy, when sure. you have a day like today where people come from all over to con concentrate in one area. And you know, I don't know if I've I've probably mentioned it a thousand times actually, but I went to school here, so uh, this is sort of my holy land. So I uh, I made sure to get here about an hour early today and just walk in and. Walk around and breathe in Ann Arbor. There's I love a lot doing of it. architecture here, a lot of history on this campus. It's fantastic for people that just want to visit. or, or A lot of my history here, but we won't go into that. Woo. So people are here today to have fun at the Hash Bash. That's Absolutely. what they come for, principally to have fun and also to, to speak out against cannabis or about can cannabis reform and uh, medical marijuana and, uh, you know, general policy as it relates to government and uh, pot. So to speak. I, and it's interesting. It, it used to be because, like I said, I went to U of M, so I remember walking through the Diag and walking right over people sitting down, you know, uh, consuming during hash bash and going, oh, yeah, that's nice. And it wasn't nearly this big. It's, it's gone very happily from um, a sort of sit down passive movement to a much more active, much more organized movement where people seem to be very, very um, motivated and and willing to get more involved, the which is excellent. The chemistry of the crowd has changed. It's, it's gone from being a primarily a, a younger person's event, uh, it's convenient for people at U of M, to really start drawing that medical marijuana crowd, which gets a lot of the middle age and the, and the older people here. But you're seeing a lot of activism being re-energized re here, especially in 2012 as a presidential election year. There's a lot of influences out there on television or in media. Uh, this is one of the opportunities for people to really hear what's going on directly from the mouths of the victims of the crime war, so of the drug war, rather. So it, it's a great opportunity for networking and, and for people to get tuned in with what's happening. So let's uh, talk about politics a little bit, because yeah. this is what everybody's here for, really. This is what it started out about 70, sev you know, in 70, what, two? 70, right? It's 41 years old, yeah. so yeah, you're 70, looking at 71. 71. <laughs> so um, the uh, whole thing started out with John Sinclair getting arrested for uh, a giving a, an undercover officer a couple of joints. Yep, two doobies, two doobies got ten him 10 years. years. Yep, and then of course uh, the history is that uh, uh, there was such an outcry that there was a, a, a rally here, uh, obviously uh, uh, um, uh, we had Beatles, uh, uh, guys coming out for that. But in addition to that, the Michigan State Supreme Court uh, changed the law, which exonerated uh, uh, John and, and allowed him to be free. And temporarily, there was a period there of a few months where there was no law about marijuana on the books in the state of Michigan. You know, and there was no law about marijuana in 1913 in, in the entire country. I, I've been looking more into the history of how the heck all this happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, really, it largely 
uh, came from a prohibition against opium and, and its derivatives, morphine and heroin. Uh, there were so many people being addicted that, that really marijuana got lumped in with that whole thing way, however, way back then. However, if you look at the real roots of this, this a lot of it points this whole prohibition thing uh, against marijuana was about control of people oh for sure back then it was too because um when when they originally lumped this in with with the prohibition of alcohol they were intending to control the minority people the people who were coming yes. from mexico the black people yes um mixing uh, with the white folks they didn't like the know. idea and the right. whole the whole opium thing started out was uh you heard of being shanghai <laughs> You've heard it. the whole being yeah. Shanghai is, yeah. is 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 basically r they would they would uh, g bring you into an opium den right. and and get you all uh, all hopped up on opium and then they 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 throw you uh, on they'd hog they'd but hog tie you and take all your stuff. But but You've been look, Shanghai. you know <laughs> a, as you have to remember opium was it's the oldest original medicine I think maybe besides marijuana but it was Correct. so widely used for a cough medicine and then morphine and then heroin um, back when when really suppressing a cough was very 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 important that you know um, there was a period of time for a very long time uh, in the history of the United States when Congress refused to make a law against what you could or could not put in your body because they said it was unconstitutional and look where we are now when I mean we're, we're now in a land where you can be strip searched for being ticketed on a bike without a without a working bell it's crazy you can be strip searched for anything now for jail security, it, the erosion of civil liberties has been absolutely shocking to me. And I, I think back and think, w what would our founding fathers say to this kind of well, thing? Didn't, the change, they, didn't they just say this week that they could strip search you for just yes. arresting you? For yes. just arresting Even you? Even if it was a false arrest, that's what I'm saying, yes. Yep. Yeah, yes. But the, the change in, in healthcare perspective, as you're mentioning, Denise, uh, uh, used to be that the cannabis derivatives were in every medical practitioner's bag in the United States of Absolutely. America. Absolutely, one of the most widely prescribed substances. Yep. And now yeah. we've gone to a pill-based system where y you prescribe <laughs> something and then you say, come back in a couple weeks, we'll see how that does. Oh, that's still messing with you? Let's prescribe something else. Ah, you, know, you hit on that, the pill didn't you, Rick? Wheel, the, pill the, pill wheel. the pill mills. And you know, <laughs> it's very <laughs> interesting, one of the largest uh, stories this week, one of the most um, popular stories this week was about the um, extremely uh, growing addiction of um, the two drugs, Vicodin and Oxycontin, the Oxycodone. Which are off both opiates. They're both yes. opiates. So, I mean, it's and, and it's becoming an enormous, enormous problem. Well, good. And I, I'm very concerned that marijuana is going to get lumped in with those again where it does not belong. Well, Ryan Leaf was an NFL quarterback who is yes. uh, retired now, was just arrested on Friday for breaking into someone's home to steal Vicodin and then was arrested again on Monday for breaking into someone else's home to steal Oxycodone. So right. you've got two of the, those two substances you specifically mentioned and, a, and a, a picture here of a guy who had the world by the by the the, the 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 throat he was the penultimate and then all of a sudden now he's all the way down in this pill addiction where he's stealing from his friends now this just doesn't happen with cannabis it no, doesn't no and but but my concern is that the minute you say drug cannabis is going to continue to get lumped in with these things and it's going to be our job um, those of us with microphones and something intelligent to say and anybody you know in this community it's going to be our job to continue to educate not only the general public but the media and the politicians to make sure that we keep cannabis separate from this kind of from this kind of uh, media report because it's just not true and we know. know that we know there's a lag time between what? between societal acceptance and between the lo way the laws change society accepts something first and then slowly laws change to come up to meet that societal acceptance right now we know we have societal acceptance for cannabis and cannabis use it's everywhere all walks of life all all ages all races all portions of the country we just have to wait for those laws to catch up with societal views but that's what we do as as, as activists as media persons we drive that change through actions like the Monroe Street Fair the hash bash this radio program the different publications that there are out there if we are not out there pushing for the laws to get changed they will not change on themselves government is not a self-correcting machine absolutely in fact it was very interesting um, I was listening this morning, MSNBC is one of my favorite, and uh, I was listening in one of the uh, panelists uh, they had this morning, they were talking about Obamacare and a few other things, said something very pertinent, which is absolutely true, and it really stuck, struck home with me. Government does not change from the top down. It just does not. You really need to take a movement like this, 
make sure you get enough support at the grassroots level, pun intended, and then make <laughs> sure that you uh, get to your politicians. See, I chuckled get outside. I chuckled out overtly. Thank you. <laughs> but that wasn't even funny. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but it makes sure that you get into the political process and make sure that you're mainstreamed and heard in the political process. You know, that's how the Americans with Disabilities Act came about from, from uh, complaints from citizens. That's how Veterans Administration changes are usually originated because of complaints from the participants. Everything that we've seen is a positive change in society generally starts as a citizen's movement. You're and, absolutely and right. And civil disobedience. I mean, uh, you know, not to, I'm not encouraging people to break the law, but I mean, when the system start, stops working, civil disobedience is a completely acceptable mode of getting your voice heard. Nonviolent resistance is something absolutely. that's been, been used successfully, not only in this nation, but in others for a long time. And it's something that we have a history of here in Michigan. Flint with the sit-down strikes was one of the very first places where we w struck for union rights. And it uh, worked. It and certainly it worked. did. And Detroit has a long history of, of, of things with the civil rights issues and, and other other uh, 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 even even uh, uh, pioneering heart technologies. So All right. we're doing a lot of things right. Two things you mentioned uh, about the news. Uh, well, that weren't that you didn't mention were the news. Uh, one thing that I'm smoking you out here. My, my You're all right. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm, I'm choking Denise with a cigarette. <laughs> it's air. one of the few times I can smoke in the studio for crying out loud. I'm outside. <laughs> wow. Sorry. You're just so smoking the wrong thing. I Woo, you want to inhale cigarette smoke right now. I inhaled, I, I admit. So um, a couple of things that were in the news that we didn't mention um, that I think were highlightable. Uh, I saw during ABC World News, um, actually it was, it was uh, part of the evening news, um, they were talking about a new outbreak of of pharmacies being robbed for their opium for the, for their opium products, mm -hmm. um, all the Vicodin and all the oxy uh, cottons and all this stuff, people are bra there's a rash. There's been there's been like 3,500 break-ins in the last couple of months. And and you don't see anyone moving to criminalize pharmacies, f criminalize far uh, 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 the the drugs, the pharmaceuticals themselves, mm -hmm. or or to to throw the uh, the. Uh, pharmaceutical reps in jail. I'll, I'll tell you what, if there were 3,500 <laughs> medical marijuana robberies across the country in the last couple of months, there would be an outrage. If there were two. Absolutely true. If there were two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Every single one makes know. national news because we're, because we're so uh, uh, cutting edge, we're so avant-garde that everything that happens, positive or negative, is newsworthy, whether so they choose to feature it or not. And it's, a, it's amazing to me that it's newsworthy when you are talking about a plant that has medicinal uh, has medicinal purposes and can be addictive. That just, to me, sounds like every other, every other drug on the planet. Dennis Alexander <laughs> from the Magic Oven, who's been a big supporter of the Medical Marijuana Radio Show. Stick your face on camera, Denny. Come on. Hey. <laughs> oh, Say this hi. Is, this <laughs> is Mr. Incognito. All the yeah. Yeah. There he is. There right. he is. Yeah. Yeah. See what happens? Oh. The, minute you, the minute you get your face on camera, you no longer wants to be, you know, incognito. That's right. Hey, Dennis. See, there's How's just it going, a, honey? Just a okay. ton of wonderful people. I know Denise <laughs> mentioned a, folk, a bunch of folks that are up on stage at the Hash Bash. Uh, but wait, 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 we're getting off point. I was talking about the news. The news, <laughs> the news. <laughs> so we yes. only got a couple minutes till break. So the news, we were talking about the news. The news yes. um, that happened, the other thing that happened that I thought was really interesting today, uh, this week, <laughs> was the arrest of uh, the guy that set up Oaksterdam University. Well, they raided the entire thing, and it was amazing to me. I mean, Oaksterdam has been there forever. It's the epicenter of the universe as far as cannabis is concerned. But did you Why see what was happening government? right across town, though, at the same time? At the same time, they're ra they're arresting and raiding the o Oaksterdam University and all the there uh, was so the shooting at the university. The shooting at the university is going yeah, on. Yeah. You know. So don't you think yeah. that the police might have been better wrapped oh, up well in the shooting? Oh, well, you know, but those you know, raid? clearly know. Oaksterdam is a much bigger threat to our safety yeah. and our civilization than uh, some you know psychotic gunman. And, and you know, there's no guarantee that there would have been a, a, an officer on duty to prevent that tragedy right then. But but even just being all of those officers involved in the Oaksterdam raid, four different businesses being shuttered. Uh, the response time had to be diminished. Uh, it, absolutely, well, in my my opinion, this is the penultimate misuse <coughs> of police resources. Well, and it, but it was it was also federal. It was FBI, DEA, IRS. IRS. I mean, yes. give me a break. Are we not done wasting resources on this kind of thing? And that was my point. I mean, th it's you know, incredible. the resources being wasted on all of those pharmacies being robbed over there, and this is about misuse of 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 opium products, uh, 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 specifically. Uh, oxycodone and uh, uh, Vicodin mm -hmm. um, yeah. by, by doctors. They're not prescribing these things properly to people uh, and, and they're causing people to become addicted to them oh, and then, and they're, then they're forced to rob them after they, they cut them off with the prescription. You've got, you've got, wait, you've got doctors being irresponsible about prescribing two extraordinarily addictive substances. <laughs> and yet, yet, you've got the house bill 
you know, targeting and the, and the, and the new uh, regulations targeting marijuana right. for the patient-physician relationship, which we can get into in a minute. So we have got so much more coming on uh, the Medical Marijuana Radio Show. We're live at the Hash Bash for the first time ever. It's the first time in the history of the 41 years that the thing has been on the radio. So I am doing my Helen Keller cocaine fingers, according to Dennis Alexander, who's making a lot of fun of us. <laughs> we'll be back with more on the Medical Marijuana Radio Show. Don't go away. If you are a legal patient in Michigan and don't know where you can get quality seeds or clones legally, Urban Genetics is your answer. If you've experienced the two to six week wait for your seeds only to find out that they don't all germinate, it's time to call Urban Genetics. Urban Genetics is Detroit's home for genetics with legal seeds for legal patients and special order services available. They even have hard to find seeds and clones. Call Urban Genetics, 248-266-0980. Urban Genetics, 248-266-0980. The law offices of Targowski and Grow remind you to stand up for your rights. Always treat law enforcement with respect, but if you're detained or arrested, stand up for your rights by repeating, I respectfully invoke all of my legal and constitutional rights. I do not consent to any search or seizure. I want to remain silent, and I want to talk to my attorneys, John Targowski and Daniel Grow. Targowski and Grow have the education and experience you need to be successful in Michigan courts. Call Targowski and Grow toll-free, 800-957-1069. The law offices of Targowski and Grow, 800-957-1069. 1069 Medical Marijuana Certification. And now you can find out everything you need to know online at getpotid.com. Or write down this toll-free number, 855-D-O-C-C-E-R-T. A friendly specialist will direct you to our Farmington Hills office. Medical Marijuana Certification. GetPotID.com. It's the key to getting your card. Information, resources, and in the end, if you're qualified, a medical card. Call toll-free right now, 855-D-O-C-C-E-R-T. That's 855-DOC-CERT. It's GetPotID.com. If you or someone you know received a traffic ticket, has been charged with a misdemeanor, drinking and driving, criminal offense, or has had their driver's license taken away, they need an attorney. They need attorney Glenn McCandless. He's helped hundreds of people solve their legal problems over the past 16 years. My law firm is dedicated to providing quality legal services at affordable rates. Call us at 586-755-2900. Again, that's 586-755-2900. Call now. spot. All I you have am. to do is stand still in Monroe Street and it'll just waft past That's here. what I'm hoping. Yeah. Someone come over. So um, uh, uh, do we have any doctors doing certifications out here today? I don't know. That I would be nice. I've got all my stuff with me. I've got my medical records. I've got everything. And you know what? On that topic, on that topic, on that we, topic. We, we were just talking about um, how doctors are, are over-prescribing, very irresponsibly over-prescribing OxyContin and, and uh, Vicodin and their derivatives. And yet, we have new regulations uh, not too long ago that, ex that, that restrict, extraordinarily restrict uh, the doctor-patient relationship when it, when it only pertains to marijuana. Mm -hmm. Now, this is in uh, the, the regulations put out by Lara in the Michigan Medical Marijuana Program. Um, so it didn't need any oversight. It didn't need any approval. But it has so severely restricted your ability to to get um, a verifiable certification from a doctor that it's my fear, and I, I, I don't want to make people too paranoid, but it's my fear that the courts and prosecutors are going to start using those regulations as the basis to attack people's cards mm -hmm. and invalidate them. Um, so what I'm going to tell all of our listeners and anybody they know that they can tell, when you go get certified, go get certified by a doctor who does this, Take your take your medical records and make sure you take a copy of those regs and you are meeting all of those conditions. I do not want people blindsided by this. And this is yet another loophole 
that the, you know, along with the, like the 12 plant rule that Bill Schuette made up, this is another restriction on this act and this uh, ability to take medical cannabis that they are going to start using to trap people, and it's frightening. Well, what you really have to, to be careful about is not to, uh, uh, thinking that this is something that hasn't passed yet. Lara has already adopted these rules. They've already sent letters out to physicians advising them of different ways that they have to conduct themselves. This is a reality. This is a right now situation. Oftentimes you talk about proposals, proposed Senate bills, proposed House bills. This is reality, Denise. It is. It is. They've already been passed. And it's, it's very disheartening because you cannot find a person on the street who can, who can tell you exactly, besides attorneys and people like us who spend all of our day looking at it and thinking about it, right. but the, the Joe cannab medical cannabis user is not going to be aware of this kind of thing. They're going to go to a certification clinic. They're going to get certified. It may not be done properly, and then they may be trapped by this, and I'm very, very concerned about the restrictions. They are, I mean, if you would have tried to pass this patient-physician relationship restriction on all pharmaceuticals, the big farm would have been down on that thing it would have never happened exactly right you know th they're making rules specific for this particular uh, instance but you remember that we're only able to get a recommendation for medical marijuana not a prescription so the prescription standard in medicine is much much higher than a recommendation standard but they've turned everything upside down and made the recommendation much more difficult to attain than a regular petition would than a regular uh, prescription would have been so the protections that were provided in the law for us have absolutely failed yeah it's it's amazing and some of the restrictions are <laughs> ridiculous mm -hmm. frankly a, a doctor having to only practice in this area you needing so so many years worth of medical records mm -hmm. and having to spend so much time in person with a physical exam you don't need this for regular medicine right. Skype medicine has been used and actually um, uh, endorsed by the Michigan medical community for years and years. You know, there's actually look, there are doctors who perform surgery over the internet. Yeah, it's well, you know. There's a House bill right now that says that telemedicine has to be respected by your insurance company, meaning that if you use telemedicine in order to receive a recommendation for Vicodin or for heart medicine or anything else, uh, they have got to, uh, uh, they have to honor that and they have to pay for that, just like they would if it was an in-person physical relationship. Now we're having exceptional rules being created for the medical marijuana community, mm -hmm. uh, specifically about telemedicine, that don't follow the rules that they're establishing for other aspects of that. Uh, once again, you're seeing a different treatment being given to something that is less harmful. I it's absolutely atrocious. And I want to point out uh, another thing. This can be used as a sword to expand this kind of restriction. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I know we like to try to keep the focus on, on medical cannabis, but at the same time, people have to understand that their civil liberties are being they messed with. Mm -hmm. um, their their no one blinks an eye when there were significant restrictions from the Homeland Security Act after 9-11 because they used 9-11 to ram it down our throats. But now you see Homeland Security Act being used to, to arrest uh, everyday citizens, to spy on, on, on our own citizenry. That's the kind of thing that we're going to have to be careful about with marijuana. Mm -hmm. No one's going to bat an eye in the Congress because this is being used to restrict marijuana. But this can be used as precedent to restrict other things, and like we need to keep an eye on this. Like a medical marijuana version of the Patriot Act, where, where a lot of freedoms that we had taken uh, for granted were removed from us because of the illusion of a threat. Uh, I've not seen any threats that would have justified some of the sacrifices that we've been forced to make from the Patriot Act, and I absolutely don't see any of the sacrifices that our patients are being asked to give uh, as far as civil liberties go uh, in, in a 2012 world. And you're right, it's not just medical marijuana patients. Mm -hmm. There are recreational users out there that are having their liberties violated as well simply because we're chasing a plant we're, we're trying to, to vilify a plant something that grows naturally that's the most organic thing you could potentially do certainly way better than any kind of pill form of medication you could take so what are the state of affairs here right now uh, we've got these bills that passed out of the Judiciary Committee and they're about to go before the Senate <laughs> yeah. uh, or that before the House floor April 17th we're understanding as they're going to be mm -hmm. considered in front of the house uh, and uh, the chances are good that most of these bills will get passed yes Yep. Yeah, there are some amendments yeah. that have been proposed or uh, suggested. Uh, we're waiting for uh, some of the representatives to make additional amendments to that. Those will have to be presented, they'll have to be heard, they'll voted on, and then they would uh, vote on the bills as they were changed by those amendments. So there's still opportunities for regular citizens to contact their, their representative and make those changes or at least suggest common sense alterations to some of these uncommon sense suggestions that are being made. Just a quick round table here. Um, and we'll start with you, Rick. Uh, of the four bills that are up there, and you know most of these issues on the bills, there's nine issues or more yes, sir. Uh, in, the, in the four bills. Is what stands out to you that, that's wrong right now? 
Well, they have a bill there that states that uh, application for a registry card or a registry identification card can now be used in certain circumstances as probable cause to issue a search warrant. At it's weird. This is one of the bills? Yes, absolutely. At what point have we decided an application for anything <laughs> gives you justification Wait a minute. to do anything? I didn't even anything. know this was in there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. So yep. you, if you apply for a medical marijuana card, this is a basis for a search warrant? Uh, uh, under certain circumstances. And again, they've defined... Under certain circumstances. They've yeah, oh, they're all circumstances. They, they are. <laughs> you know, we know, we know a search warrant is a dime a dozen. You can print those things off the Internet now. Yep. Like you're going to indict a ham sandwich. Yeah. The second thing is they're giving access to, to all law enforcement agents uh, to the registry database. And that means uh, fish and game service employees can get this. Uh, uh, people from the parks and recreation uh, uh, employed by the state can get access to the patient registry database. That's this the most uh, problematic uh, one, the lien. This, this was so not what we intended in yeah. 2008. Same question to, to yeah. Denise. Yeah, putting putting the uh, registry cards on the lien, the, the law uh, enforcement information network, meaning that when they uh, are behind you on the road and they type in your, your license plate or they swipe your license, they're going to see that you are a medical marijuana patient or a medical marijuana caregiver. That's frightening. I mean, talk about... Talk about profiling. Wait a minute. They're, <laughs> they're going to give them open access, so as soon as they punch yeah. your name in, they're going to see that you have well, a card? You have Potentially. To, they have to punch in your name and your date of birth. Well, geez, my driver's license has, has my, my name, name and, and date my date of birth, birth on right? it. Exactly. As soon as they have that driver's license, they have all the information they need in order to access you. And, by the way, if they have a roadside stop already, they have probable cause to access the lien database to get all information available about you. And so let's so not, now, let's they, not now, they your, now they know you're a card holder. <laughs> now they're going to ask to search the vehicle, and if you've been smoking any marijuana and all these questions are going to pop forward. And exactly correct. Y you have to know, and, and uh, something that I vehemently disagree with, they are going to use the smell of marijuana as probable cause to search your car, which I completely disagree with. Mm -hmm. It's fragrant stuff. You can smell it all the time. Well, what about it marijuana not scented cause. incense? There's car I fresheners that they use that are scented which like that. Which I think that. is fantastic, yeah, but and, and they're going to use it. Bet, right? uh, but, I mean, the, the fact that they, and, and let's not kid ourselves, they don't even need to make a traffic stop. All they really need to do is punch in your license plate. We know that law enforcement You didn't even need to do anything wrong. They punched in your license, found out that you're a card holder, and want to frisk you down now. I thought you were weaving in your lane. I'm sorry, you crossed the center line. Yeah, no, we know we know oh, well. that we know that they have about 141 okay, so different reasons to stop you and, and they'll still find one. Here's the biggest problem that I have with the bill. I think the biggest problem is is that they've taken out the bit about the jury gets to hear whether or not you have a medical marijuana defense coming to you. you know, that, that was originally included by Rep Kavanaugh. Uh, the trier of fact was going to be forced in, to uh, be heard uh, hear the medical marijuana defense in certain It should be a matter of right. Well, it should be for Section 8 and Section 4 also. And uh, Obviously, uh, prosecutors and judges have been denying juries the opportunity to hear the fact that these people being prosecuted are medical marijuana patients. I know, Denise, you've struggled with this for a while. Uh, yeah, it's, you know, this is the thing. If you read the statute, if you, if you really read the plain language of the statute, which, by the way, the court system continues to sit upon as, as part of their, as almost the entire part of the rationalization for, for stating that if it's not in the act, it's illegal. Mm -hmm. Let's read the plain language of the act. If you read the plain language of the act, it clearly allows you to bring the medical marijuana defense, the fact that you are a patient and a card holder, uh, into every single part, uh, into uh, the arraignment, pretrial, trial, the whole thing. And we have seen, uh, other than this, uh, we've seen these regulations and a lot of the uh, opinions, uh, particularly from the Court of Appeals, literally eroding and restricting this law down to nothing. Well, the right to bring that to a defense at a trial was actually on the ballot language itself. There is no more clear evidence that the people wanted us to be able to present this at trial than the ballot language itself from 2008. And and I have to, to get down to um, sort of the nut of the issue also for me. I don't think there should be cards at all. Mm -hmm. I, 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 <laughs> I don't understand why you have to carry around a card that identifies you as somebody who has a medical condition warrant warranting a certain medication. I'm not required to carry around a card saying I, I take Midol once a month or, 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 I, or, I, have a, or I have asthma. Or, or well, I here's, have a better, here's a better example. I, I carry around needles with me because I'm an insulin patient. I, I have diabetes. You're, you're not required to identify yourself as having a medical condition. I think it's a civil rights violation. I think it's a privacy violation, and it's disgusting. It's a scarlet letter situation that we shouldn't have to deal with. Medical marijuana patients shouldn't have to divulge their illness, their sickness, and yet we've heard law enforcement officials question patients Every time, why do you have this card? What right. are you? What's your what oh, and, 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 and you don't look. And you don't look sick. I'm sorry. Sick. I have never in my life looked at someone and gone, "Yeah, they have cancer." I have no idea what a cancer <laughs> patient looks like. No, they look I like me. They don't. look like Steve. They look like yeah, everybody. I mean, I have. You you cannot look at somebody and by their physical appearance decide whether or not they're ill. Mm -hmm. 
Seriously, that it's disgusting. It, this is the Salem witch trials. And the thing that's the, the most disturbing is that people who have medical marijuana cards rightly are under the impression that they're not breaking the law and right. that they're allowed to tell people about that it. It's legal. And, and at that this it's point, legal. Yeah, it's and at this point, and it's not, by the way. It's not. And, and at this point, you've got people who are becoming complacent because they have cards. They think they have a right to do this. And, and law enforcement has spent all of its time finding the little loopholes and trapping people and, and prosecuting them over it. Just like you're talking about with the, uh, the bona fide doctor-patient Absolutely. relationship. By providing more restrictions, you have more opportunities for them to disqualify you for having a bona fide relationship. And again, to make rules specific to medical marijuana that don't apply to leukemia, that don't apply to cancer, that don't apply to HIV, that don't apply to any other illness, defies explanation and logic. Yep. So this is what we're out here today about. This is what the hash bash is about, is to talk about these issues and to bring politics forth in a way that is fruitful, in a way that makes sense, where people can engage their politicians, engage right. their local politics, because all politics are local. Mm -hmm. Engage your state people and, and make a difference. Well, and you, you and you that being said, you guys have to leave pretty soon to go off to the hash bash over to the to the diag yeah, and do, do your speaking, don't yeah. you? Exactly. Right. That's why people have to come out to these events to find out what the current state of the law is. Because if you think that the law in 2009 is the same as it is now, you are going to be in jail soon. Because there's a major changes in the way that the law is being enforced from then till now, even though there's no change in the actual letter of the law itself. It, it's uh, it, and like I like to, like I tell everybody that the vast majority of the people that I have seen, who have been um, uh, arrested, raided, whatever, have done so and and have not had any knowledge that they were breaking the law. They really thought uh, that they were doing everything appropriately, yep. and they simply weren't informed because there's nowhere you can go to really get that informed. So it's important for you if you are a if you're a patient, if you're a card holder, if you're a caregiver, if you're a grower, and if you know someone who is, to stay informed. So it, you know, there's no felony without intent, and none of those people have intent, but yet they're still being charged with felonies. Ah, uh, ah, uh, you're, talking, uh, and you're talking near and dear to my heart right this now. This is what gets me the most. Again, this is why I brought that up as the biggest issue for me, because the Medical Marijuana Act only gets you gives you protection against arrest, prosecution, and then uh, gives you defense if they do prosecute you. It does not give you protection against search and seizure warrants. Yes, it doesn't. <laughs> doesn't well, well, it doesn't give you all kinds of rights yep. that people think that your card gives you as a right. Yep. It does not. It no, gives it you protection. And they deny you the protection once you get to court. And they just said in, in, the, in a codified form from the legislators themselves that they're going to continue to do that. That's to read between the lines on this. If we're not going to let you have a jury uh, hear this decision, we're still going to arrest you. We're still going to target you. We're still going to prosecute you. And we're still going to deny you to def your defense. Well, and the card doesn't represent a screw you to law enforcement. It doesn't represent a get out of jail card. Uh, it means you still have to operate with common sense and with good intent and with the, the, the direction that's provided by legal attorneys like Denise, like Glenn, who's a sponsor of the show, like other people that you can find out there. Don't take your own word for it or your buddy's word for it. Get the experts to tell you what to do. Get yeah. onto the Michigan Normal website. Get onto the MAC, uh, Michigan Association of Compassion Club website. Right. Get onto one of the websites in Michigan. Find a qualified attorney and talk to them. We'll, All right. we'll talk. We'll I have talk. to give a heads up back to the studio. I've just noticed a technical problem here on location. Our shell, our shell has crashed in the background. So our, we would normally have hit a commercial break right now, and I'm going to escort you guys off because if you guys don't go, you're going to get in trouble because I was waiting for the break to come so you guys could leave during the break, but uh, we can't do that. So See you on the diag. Studio, we're going to be, I'm going to be having to watch the clock very carefully because there will be no last break. There will be no rejoin. There will be no show close. Um, those have all been scrapped because we've got a technical issue back here. I don't know why it happened, uh, but I noticed that it did happen. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys. Could go ahead and take off if you want. All right, we'll if be you, back. Have you got anything else to say before you go? I mean, uh, no good luck. Uh, Happy hash bash. Good, good luck filling the last eight minutes. We'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back as soon as I'm done. Because we're going to be stream diag. We're going to yeah. be streaming here live the rest of the day, and I'm going to try and connect it up uh, so that people can hear the um, people can hear the bands and stuff. I'll absolutely be back. I'll Theo, try to bring some. Theo, I can't make uh, sense of you right now. You can't talk to me while I'm on the air, Theo. <laughs> Damn. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be back and I'll try to bring some uh, intelligent speaking people with me from the Diag, okay? Uh, we'll get it after the, we'll, it would normally be a break. Yeah, yeah, awesome. P please come back because we'd love to see you streaming. Break a leg, you guys, on the stage. Say hello to Steve for me. Steve D'Angelo. So uh, we're, we're, we're live out here at the Hash Bash. We've been talking up politics. We've been talking up sponsors. <coughs> and again, alert, 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 back to the studio. There is no show closed. There is no break. So we're going we're gonna to close out uh, in a live way. I don't know how, you know, it's going to have to be that way. Robert, did you bring the timer? Can I get the, can I get the clock? Yeah, it's, uh... No, that's what, I just, I, what i got to do is I've got to, I've got to, I've got to set this thing so I know when, when the show ends. 
show so, ending. Uh, show ending. I ending. just wanted to mention that uh, Tuesday at U of N Flint and the U Sen, we're going to be uh, having a petition signing for the Committee for Safer Michigan from noon to three. Noon to three, where is this at? This is in U of M Flint in the University Center. And this yeah. is for the repealtoday.org? Correct. Uh, can they also sign the uh, Bill Schutte petition there? I don't think we have any, but if we manage to get some, we will have them. We, sh we should talk to Matt Abel out here today. He, Matt's uh, Matt's yeah. out here, and he would have petitions for that purpose. Yep. So um, I wanted to uh, try to get him on later. Yeah, well, that would be a good thing. Um, Ant Farm is out here today. Uh, we want to thank our sponsors, uh, Ant Farm, and then also uh, Green Planet. Green Planet here is at 700 Tappan. Uh, they've got a big, a beautiful tent. Uh, see if you see, go see if you can get uh, see if you can find Mike over there. All right, I'll be right back. Yeah, see if you can find Mike. We'll talk to him briefly before we go off the air here on 1310. Uh, we'll be here until five o'clock streaming on uh, RadioEatShow.com and on BudTVNetwork.com. Uh, Bud TV Network recently launching. Bob did a great job with that. We stayed up all night kicking it in the butt. <laughs> it still needs some kicking, let me tell you. Doesn't it need some more kicking, Bob? I'm gonna boot it real good. <laughs> <laughs> that was a computer joke. I chuckled outside, Denise, if you're listening. You know what I didn't do, Bob? It's going to drive me nuts. I didn't hit the record button. Well, none of this show has been recorded. Oh, man. <laughs> live and gone forever. It's live and no, and it's, it. it's not gone forever because what we'll do, okay, uh, apparently uh, the guy from uh, Green Planet can't talk, so uh, that's okay, but uh, Green Planet's a great dispensary. Come on out and check them out right here at the corner of uh, uh, Monroe and Tappan, and uh, it's the Monroe Street Fair. Uh, we're going here until 5 o'clock. Uh, we'll be on here uh, for just a few more minutes wow, here on 1310. It is an awesome crowd. I'm really Beautiful pumped day. out that the uh, close of the show didn't. Uh, we did, can't get the close of the show in. It's really weird. It's the first time we've never had uh, a physical uh, sound closing the show. I don't know. It's going to be like me going, okay, we're, and we're signing off. <laughs> show ending. Uh, so um, if you get a chance to come out here, look, I, I don't, what have I got? Uh, oh, I've got. Uh, I put a, there's a there's a lot of people there's a sea of people coming across. It's a beautiful day and uh, they got lots of uh, you know they got porta potties out so <laughs> don't worry about anything. They get food here. There's it's just awesome. The crowd, everybody's wonderful. Everybody's nice. It's uh, a it's just a great day. To I be wanted out. to think of our sponsors that were, were should have been on our last break. I uh, wanted to talk about Hydro Hut. Uh, Hydro Hut is an inkster. Uh, they've got great deals right now, uh, especially on a thousand watt light package. It's an HPS light package. Uh, for 200 bucks, you get a digital ballast, wow. the E Wing reflector, and the uh, thousand watt HPS bulb. Uh, wow, usually you just get the ballast. Yeah, for, that. for 200 bucks. Look, uh, I've seen, yeah. I remember buying ballast digital ones for 400 bucks yeah. back uh, not That's too long ago. Uh, also, Hydro Hood has a, 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 a discount. It's a 20% discount uh, for first time buyers. You got to mention the medical marijuana radio okay. show to do it. Also, want to mention uh, hello, give a shout out to uh, another sponsor, Urban Genetics. Uh, Urban oh Genetics yeah, they uh, have has great seeds, great seeds and uh, uh, clones. Uh, hard to find genetics. Um, if if you're a patient, a carded patient in the state of Michigan, and you're trying to figure out how to get your genetics, if you're just starting as a grower, um, that would be the place to go. They're Urban really nice people too. They're really easy to talk to and Urban Genetics. Help you, out. you can find uh, how to get to Urban Genetics on the front page of RadioEatShow.com. If you find their banner, it's got the big UG. If you see the UG banner, click on it. It'll take you right to their website. We've got about four more minutes left on the show. And what I should probably do, you know what I'm going to do, Robert, is I'm gonna, uh, this is the best way for me to do this because it's the only way I've got an accurate pick on the clock. Well, you know that Rick and, uh, Rick and Denise yeah. just might, <laughs> we might have to, we might have to bail Rick and Denise out if they go for the protests and decide to go get arrested. So you're going to hear some audio come up. It's our, it's repeat audio of the, of the, of the Bud TV. Um, in, in fact, did I you know, there's a commercial playing in the background. I'm gonna starting. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take her out for a second. Wow, that's awesome. I, uh, actually, video. that's the way I'm gonna do it. I can just do it that way. Uh, see, now I can see what the we got about three, you know, three and a half minutes of the show left before we gotta go off air. So, um, uh, who else do we got for sponsors? Uh, there, I just, I, I feel like I'm leaving somebody out. Um, oh, 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 we got uh, Targowski and Grow. Uh, Targowski and Grow are legal guys, uh, and you can find them on our website too. Green uh, beans. Well, not Green Bean. Let me just finish talking about. Look, let me finish one one thing before the next. Uh, Targowski Bun and Grow. Hey, I'm gonna clobber y'all. I'm clobbering all of you. <laughs> look, look, the the help is gonna beat up on me because they're volunteers. They can get away with it. <laughs> just just poke Helen Keller. Just knock them over. <laughs> <laughs> poke Helen Keller. I love it. So uh, the, what's grasping me now is the d delicious smell of food wafting across here. Targowski. Ah. Uh, Targowski. Targowski. Look, <laughs> just gonna clobber you, dude. <laughs> um. Targowski and Grow, yeah, we got those guys. Um, 
if you need some legal representation, uh, those guys are the guys to call. Um, Very professional. Yeah, and then also McCandless, Glenn McCandless, another uh, uh, another of our sponsors. Uh, Targowski's out on the west side of the state. Uh, McCandless is on the east side of the state. Uh, he's in more of the Detroit area. Uh, if you want Targowski, he's he does a, a more most of his stuff uh, a little further west, Grand Rapids area, uh, west side of the state. So um, we were glad you ca had a chance to come along and join us on the Medical Marijuana Radio Show today. I'm sorry we had the technical glitch at the end here. It's like the last portion of our show. It failed. I don't know why it stopped. It, it shouldn't have stopped playing, but it did. Wow. It just up and uh, quit. Normally that doesn't happen. But uh, that's okay. We're prepared for that stuff. If you get a chance, the Homegrown Show is coming up here in moments on 1310 AM, WDTW, Detroit's Progressive Talk. The comments, ideas, and opinions expressed in the preceding program are those of the show participants only. Nothing stated in this program reflects the ideas, opinions, or beliefs of this radio station and or Clear Channel Radio. This is Detroit's Progressive Talk, 1310.